Safe Surgical Dislocation for Femoral Head Fractures A Surgical Technique Video The patient presented in the Surgical Technique Video is a 22-year-old male who sustained a motor vehicle accident and presented to us in the ER with a femoral head fracture dislocation on the right side and an associated pelvic ring injury. The hip was reduced in the OR within 6 hours of injury and was found to be stable. The post-reduction CT scan, however, shows a displaced and comminuted femoral head fracture. The 3D image shows the fracture line extending into the weight-bearing portion of the femoral head, indicating a type 2 Pipkin injury. To perform the safe surgical dislocation, the patient is placed in a lateral decubitus position on a radial loosened table, which will allow use of image intensifier from the opposite side. Two to three assistants are required to carry out the surgical procedure. The injured limb is prepped and drape free and a formal timeout is performed to identify the correct side. The landmarks for surgical incision include the long axis of the femoral shaft and the greater trochanter. A 20 cm straight incision is made centered over the greater trochanter in line with the axis of the femoral shaft. The incision is taken down to the subcutaneous tissues and the fascia over the gluteus maximus muscle and the tensor fascia latter are exposed. The next step is to identify the Gibson interval between the gluteus maximus and the medius muscle. This is best done by starting the facial incision proximal to the greater trochanter along the anterior border of the gluteus maximus muscle. Once the facial incision is made, the muscle fibers are gently teased off from the fascia, exposing the underlying gluteus medius muscle. Retrotrochantric exposure can be improved by bringing the limb into extension. The trochantric bursa is then gently teased off to identify the posterior structures. The sciatic nerve lies over the quadratus femoris and should be identified and isolated when you are using a surgical dislocation for treating an acetabular fracture. But it is not required when you are using it for a femoral head fracture dislocation. The posterior border of the gluteus medius muscle is identified and retracted to expose the pyriformis tendon and the underlying gluteus minimus muscle. The space between the gluteus minimus muscle and the pyriformis tendon is developed and the gluteus minimus is gently elevated from the underlying capsule to make anterior exposure much easier. At this point, all the important posterior structures have been identified. The vastus lateralis muscle is then elevated of the femoral shaft for a distance of around 5 to 6 cm. The osteotomy line is then marked with a surgical knife. This diagram illustrates the technique of performing a trochanteric osteotomy. The limb is brought into 20 degrees of internal rotation and the osteotomy line runs from anterior to the posterior border of the gluteus medius muscle and exits distal to the vastus lateralis origin. Leaving behind the posterior fibers of the gluteus medius muscle, make sure the osteotomy does not run too medial which can violate the blood supply to the femoral head. With a well done osteotomy, the attachments of the short external rotators and the pyriformis tendon will be intact. An oscillating saw is used for this purpose and the osteotomy measures around 1 to 1.5 cm in thickness. If the surgeon requires more stability at the osteotomy site, the straight cut can be modified into a step cut technique. Once the osteotomy is completed, the remaining posterior fibers of the gluteus medius muscle are sharply elevated. The osteotomized trochanteric fragment containing the insertion of gluteus medius and vastus lateralis muscle is then gently lifted off and reflected anteriorly. Spiked woman retractors are placed anteriorly to retract the osteotomized fragment.
and the limb is brought gradually into a position of flexion and external rotation to expose the anterior capsule. Further dissection is performed to expose the entire anterior, superior and inferior capsular region. A spiked Oman retractor can be hammered in into the anterior column to retract the anterior soft tissues. Now the entire anterior capsule is exposed and a capsulotomy can be done. The anterior capsulotomy is performed in a Z-shaped fashion as described by Professor Gans. One however has to remember that atypical capsular tears and avulsions can already be present because of the injury and you may have to modify your capsulotomy accordingly. The anterior limb of the capsulotomy is performed first. It is then taken down into the inferior capsule, which is completely released. When the capsulotomy is extended into the medial aspect, you have to be extremely careful not to violate the hip labrum. Finally, the superior aspect of the capsulotomy is done. Now the capsulotomy is completed and you can see two capsular flaps, a superior and an inferior one. The femoral head is now gently dislocated by using a bone hook. Now the fracture site is completely exposed and the fracture bed is cleared of debris and clots. As you can see, the fracture is comminuted with a supraforeolar main fragment and a small comminuted accessory fragment on the inferior aspect. The acetabular cavity is inspected for presence of chondral and intraarticular bony fragments which should be removed at this point. You should also look for associated labral avulsions which should be repaired if identified by using 3 mm suture anchors. Having ruled out labor lesions, the fracture is now reduced and held in place by using a pointed Weber clamp. Fracture reduction is checked all around and is found to be anatomical. We prefer to use 2.4 mm countersunk cortex screws for fixation. Whenever possible, we prefer to drill from the antero inferior portion of the femoral head. Brisk back bleeding from the fractured fragment indicates viability. The near cortex is slightly overdrilled to help in countersinking, and a 2.4 mm cortex screw is inserted and countersunk. The comminuted antero inferior fragment is fixed using a similar technique. Fixation is completed by placing two more screws into the main fragment. The mark made by the prongs of the Weber clamp is used to insert the final screw. A reduction of the head fragment and fixation is checked all around and the hip is gently relocated. The anterior capsulotomy is then approximated and closed by using number one absorbable sutures in an interrupted manner. The limb is now brought back to neutral position and the osteotomized fragment is reduced back. Reduction is checked and the osteotomy is provisionally secured by using two 2 mm K wires. We prefer to use two or three 3.5 mm 
fully threaded cortex screws for fixation of the osteotomy. These screws are typically 50 to 70 mm in length and they get excellent purchase into the opposite medial cortex, allowing immediate mobilization of the limb. The quality of reduction of the fracture and osteotomy is checked using fluoroscopy. The hip joint is also assessed for congruency. You can see the posterior fibers of the gluteus medius that were left behind, the piriformis tendon and the entire posterior structures that are left intact after the surgical procedure. The wound is now closed in layers with a suction drain. Postoperatively, the patient is allowed active range of movement exercises of the hip joint but is placed on a restricted weight bearing protocol till 8 weeks following which is allowed uninterrupted weight bearing. Follow up x-rays at 6 months show a well yield fracture and an osteotomy with a congruent hip joint.